Hello there. In this video, let's go through an overview of OpenSSL. First of all, what is OpenSSL? OpenSSL is a toolkit that includes cryptography and SSL TLS library and a command line utility. In a very simple terms that's what it is and it is very likely if you're a developer that you would have stumbled upon this tool at some point in your development career nevertheless what OpenSSL used for so it is a library and a command line utility as I mentioned which can be used for various different things like it supports cryptographic algorithms uh, certificates specifically saying x509 certificates and it supports a secure socket layer which is a protocol for secure communication uh, very much uh, deprecated since uh, 2015 uh, and succeeded by uh, the transport layer security uh, which is a successor of uh, SSL and so forth so in cryptographic algorithms uh, you'd have come across terms like symmetric and asymmetric uh, you know encryption uh, digital signatures message digest and key exchange algorithms and so forth so all of these support is what OpenSSL provides for applications and its current version is uh, at OpenSSL version 3 which is licensed under Apache version 2 uh, however Previously, it was licensed under BSD style license and it's available in most operating systems and so forth. So, who actually uses OpenSSL? So, OpenSSL is used by application developers uh, for their applications to have secure communication, uh, encryption, uh, digital signatures, and so forth. And uh, obviously, it's also used by system administrators and DevOps uh, as, a, as a command line utility. Uh, in fact, the command line utility utilizes the underlying library, uh, which usually the application developers use uh, for developing their applications. So it's also very important to understand the history of uh, OpenSSL. So OpenSSL uh, actually is based on another library called SSL EAY that EAY part of it uh, stands for Eric Andrew Young the person who actually started developing uh, this particular library I don't know how to pronounce it though I believe it's SSL E or something like that and the history uh, says that its development actually started back in 1995 uh, however OpenSSL uh, was forked from SSLE in 1998 by some founding members after Eric Andrew Young and there was another person who was uh, working along with him actually stopped uh, working further on SSLE, SSLE library when they joined uh, uh, another company. Since then OpenSSL had gone through various uh, uh, releases and many companies have contributed to its development and there is a core development team uh, you know maintaining the the toolkit and other companies as i mentioned like uh, uh, various different companies contribute for uh, OpenSSL as well so that's uh, roughly uh, the history of OpenSSL uh, but if you ask me like what are the companies that are really interested on uh, developing OpenSSL because their applications are actually using OpenSSL libraries for secure communication and so forth uh, you know companies such as Oracle, Akamai, uh, Red Hat, IBM, VMware, Intel and so forth so there are many actually so that's basically a very uh, uh, light glimpse of uh, the history of uh, OpenSSL. So the current version of OpenSSL, uh, as I mentioned, is OpenSSL version 3. Uh, so OpenSSL is largely a very stable software. Uh, it's a toolkit, uh, is, is very stable, and uh, there had been uh, versions that I have used, like 102, 111, and, and so forth. And this OpenSSL 3 uh, is, a, is a milestone release in a, in a in various ways because uh, it's the version that uh, maintains transition 
to Apache version 2 from the BSD style version. So Apache uh, licensing is uh, some, uh, it's kind of a very liberal uh, license that uh, allows your software to uh, be open sourced or commercially used, whatever. And uh, having uh, a toolkit uh, license under Apache uh, software license is always useful. And there are many, many, many applications that actually use OpenSSL underneath. So if you look at uh, some high level changes that has happened in OpenSSL 3 over some of its predecessors uh, uh, is like, uh, as I mentioned, as, as the toolkits are very stable toolkit. So from the, uh, from the exterior, you wouldn't feel much of a difference, uh, but there are some architectural changes that has happened in uh, version 3. Uh, for example, uh, the, the toolkit now moved on from a concept called engine to a provider concept. Basically, uh, this concept uh, is what they call as OpenSSL operator, uh, operation implementation providers uh, concept. The provider is a unit of code uh, that uh, allows uh, uh, implementation of cryptogra cryptographic algorithms be to be plugged in by various implementers, basically providers. And the engine support is still there in OpenSSL 3. However, it is deprecated. So there is a chance that it can get uh, removed in future versions. And of course, being, uh, you know, when you have a newer version, uh, there are, there will always be uh, new features uh, in the toolkit as well. So one of the notable features that was uh, added to OpenSSL version 3 uh, is this version uh, is this uh, feature called kernel TLS so or simply KTLS so basically with what kernel TLS means is that uh, uh, you know an application uh, can create uh, using OpenSSL 3 of course a TLS socket so basically when you do uh, network communication you use a socket so it creates something called a TLS socket, similar to a TCP socket, and then hand over that socket information to the operating system kernel. And then onwards, uh, uh, basically the encryption, all the, the related matters uh, for transport layer security happens in the kernel mode, rather than in the user mode, uh, which has been the case uh, from, for uh, for the OpenSSL in previous versions. Of course, even though this this particular feature is available, not many operating systems still support uh, this. Uh, it's only available, I believe, in Linux and some uh, BSD uh, operating systems, but not in other operating systems. Then OpenSSL is smart enough to uh, identify whether the kernel supports that. If the kernel supports that, it could use the kernel TLS mode because the kernel level operation can have quite a uh, performance improvement uh, when it comes to various uh, encryption because it can use hardware uh, level support uh, for such encryptions and uh, which can result in higher performance when it comes to uh, you know communication between uh, various uh, endpoints right and also in the in, the, in this particular version there had been some uh, major improvements uh, when it comes to how applications uh, could interact with the the library uh, which included higher level apis inherently open ssl's apis uh, had been uh, quite low level and uh, as an application developer you uh, had to be uh, you you really have to be uh, on your toes to use the, the library. It's not that easy. It's written in C and uh, the API is also in C uh, API. And higher level API is kind of uh, abstracts that's a way and provides you a little easier uh, interface for your applications to utilize uh, various services provided by the toolkit. And of course, in this particular version, uh, they also introduced newer encryption algorithms, uh, newer uh, you know, message authentication code algorithms and so forth, right? And, and key derivation algorithms. And if you are not really familiar with these encryption algorithm, back algorithms, KDF algorithms and so forth, uh, don't worry. Uh, so I have some plans to, uh, you know, create some videos around uh, these uh, uh, terminology and, and get yourself uh, to some understanding of these uh, terms and so forth. 
so stay tuned uh, for our stay tuned with our youtube channel so that you uh, can get those details in future very soon uh, so that's about the open ssl uh, version 3 and uh, it's also unfair if i uh, did talk about uh, alternate use to open ssl as well right so open ssl is not the only tool that's available for your uh, ssl tls uh, and, and secure communication uh, for your applications and uh, even though the open ssl word contains ssl which is a deprecated thing but uh, remember open ssl was created uh, back in 1998 back then ssl was the uh, only uh, you know protocol for secure communication and now it's been uh, succeeded by uh, tls so the word open ssl has stuck uh, among developers and uh, system administrators so uh, for that matter open ssl uh, team continues to use uh, the the name open ssl to name the tool uh, which is fair enough and uh, there are a few alternatives for open ssl so one alternative is this gnu tls gnu tls uh, it is uh, basically it's created uh, for one reason for it to be created is because of the license and uh, as you might know gnu applications have to be licensed under gpl or gpl compatible license and uh, uh, you know open ssl uh, being uh, for all these while being a bsd style license and now being an apache license does not uh, make it compatible with gudu license so for that matter the gudu project created their own uh, tls toolkit and they called it gudu uh, tls so basically it supports various uh, secure communication but it does not support cryptography directly like OpenSSL does. So OpenSSL has been around for a very long time and uh, has become very popular and by far, in my opinion, the de facto toolkit for uh, secure communication and SSL TLS related uh, matters and, and, you know, certificate related matters and so forth. However, Guru TLS uh, is the tool that you might have to use if you have any plans to release your software under uh, GPL, uh, General Public License version 2 uh, or, or related uh, uh, license like lgpl so consider that if you if you uh, want to create your software uh, in, in that manner uh, however gnu tls utilizes various other tools like uh, uh, nettl and gmp for uh, you know cryptography and uh, big number arithmetic and so forth right and apart from that uh, the gnu tls also supports uh, uh, a newer type of certificate called open uh, pgp so basically what open gp is uh, an alternative for x509 type certificate and uh, the one of the differences between x509 and open uh, pgp certificate is uh, uh, x509 certificates are usually signed by its issuer uh, at the time of being issued and so forth but open pgp uh, let that step open and so forth and uh, however you know even though open pgp had been around it hasn't actually picked up quite uh, what or quite how its uh, initiators expected so x509 is by far the most uh, popular certificate type as of yet and another tool that you can use instead of open ssl uh, is what uh, we call as this nss tool network security services uh, in fact in a way this is the first uh, implementation of ssl protocol because it was invented by uh, Nets uh, netscape uh, navigator browser and uh, by netscape uh, communication corporation back in 1994 and uh, however it wasn't a library uh, back then so it was just part of the browser and uh, it was available in that but later they made it as a as a as a library uh, and that happened after uh, open ssl uh, uh, was available as a library and uh, of course it's because uh, you know netscape later became uh, mozilla and firefox and so forth uh, it's licensed under mozilla public license so you can have a look at uh, uh, it uh, in uh, uh, in uh, uh, in this particular uh, URL so that you, that you see another library that you can use instead of OpenSSL is a library called Botan uh, which is uh, somewhat uh, relatively a newer 
uh, toolkit which is written in C++ instead of C. So, uh, and if you are, uh, if you're writing a C++ application, maybe that you might want to consider this. However, uh, remember it, ha it doesn't have any OpenSSL compatible API because its API is a C++ API. However, according to the website, they provide uh, C bindings and Python bindings and various other bindings for different programming languages, which is a, a great thing if you want to uh, write, uh, you know, polyglot applications where you you maybe want to uh, interact with multiple different uh, uh, programming languages for your applications and so forth and there are some other libraries which are uh, useful for embedded applications uh, because of its memory footprint and they compete with OpenSSL in that front so uh, these uh, libraries include Wolf uh, SSL, Embedded TLS uh, matrix SSL and so forth and uh, you might want to have a look at these libraries if you are writing uh, an embedded application for a IOT project or you know any device that may have a weaker CPUs low memory and so forth another library to look at is uh, uh, Libre uh, SSL um, again I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this Libre SSL or Libre SSL and whatever it is, it is it is also a fork of OpenSSL, and it was forked from the OpenBSD project. And uh, particularly after uh, a vulnerability that was detected back in two thousand and fourteen, uh, 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 which was this infamous uh, Heartbleed uh, vulnerability that was found in OpenSSL. So uh, you know, you know, OpenBSD project which focuses on security mainly forked OpenSSL and they removed quite a bunch of uh, uh, the old algorithms and uh, they made the OpenSSL lean and uh, they removed uh, uh, certain uh, you know uh, algorithms and encryption methodologies older methods uh, and, and made it quite modern and added some newer uh, encryption algorithms as well so uh, I have seen some uh, applications use uh, Libre SSL. Even uh, some applications in macOS uh, seems to be using because macOS is based on uh, a BSD uh, project. So uh, you know some applications may be utilizing it. But good thing is it has a uh, API level compatibility with OpenSSL. However, uh, not fully. So that's uh, where you might need to be a little careful, uh, especially uh, when your system has different SSL libraries picked up that can cause some problems. So, uh, you know, uh, keep an eye on that if you're, if you're uh, on such operating system, BSD style operating system especially. And there is another library called Boring SSL. Of course, another uh, fork from OpenSSL from Google. And they made it again, just like Librex uh, SSL, they removed uh, uh, some older encryption algorithms, older algorithms especially, but not as much as Libre, uh, SSL. Uh, but their focus is mainly to utilize this particular library within Google for their applications. So they don't also anticipate to maintain uh, API level compatibility with OpenSSL. Uh, so in, uh, in that sense, it's not suitable for general uh, applications and Google also uh, does not recommend that uh, but uh, if, if you're unless you are working uh, for Google and uh, creating an application for Google uh, that might be a different case so uh, so this is it so OpenSSL uh, is, a, is a tool uh, that you should if you're a developer or a system administrator or a DevOps uh, you should certainly give a shot on and I'm pretty sure you would have uh, stumbled upon this at some point uh, if not, you should. And uh, having said that, uh, so I'll see you in a future post, uh, future video with more details about this cryptography and various algorithms and so forth, uh, which is something that I'm also uh, researching uh, these days uh, as, a, as a research interest uh, on the subject. So stay tuned for more videos and have a great day.